Well, hello, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, it doesn't work without you guys, man. So ends another day. This week is now on the tail end side. Tomorrow's already Thursday. We have, I don't know if we can really call it football. Cleveland. And Cincinnati. Hmm. Yeah. Well, we got that. So, at least it's something. I, it's not much, but it's something. It's a taste. It gives us just a taste heading into the weekend, at least. We got an important game this weekend against the Falcons, and we'll go into that more tomorrow as we start really preparing for the game and stuff. But I just want to touch on that Jordan Lewis, fortunately, Jordan Lewis, is back in practice and seems to be okay. Uh, tomorrow, of course, is the big practice of the week. The Cowboys have their biggest practice, longest practice on Thursday, and they dial it back on Friday, so that way hopefully the team is well-rested come Sunday. And the Cowboys have some injuries. I mean, we know we lost Blake Jarwin. We know Sean Lee ended up having surgery, so instead of him coming back off of injury reserve in two weeks, it's at least six weeks. Hopefully, I.L. Collins will be okay because we definitely need some help on the offensive line. But, you know, everybody, and I, I want to look and see if I haven't found anybody who's, you know, communi community, have put together all the amount of injuries that have happened this year versus other years. Because, really, you've got to understand, it's been nine months since most of these guys have had any hitting. And even though we had training camp, Training camp's not like when I went to school, you know, where you were hitting. You know, we had, I'll give you an example. At JMU, when Coach Brzezicki came in, okay, Charles McMillan got fired. Coach Brzezicki came in. Spring football. Spring football. Not fall. I'm talking about spring football. We got shirts that were, I hit for 20. If you made it through all 20 of the spring football practices without getting hurt. Let me say that again. Spring football, we had 20 full padded practices, full contact, and if you survived, you got I hit for 20. Not everybody got one of those shirts because people were getting injured in spring football. So let's back this up to the NFL season. Back it up to the NFL season where we've had 14 padded practices where it's not full contact where you take guys to the ground. You're not actually tackling guys. You're kind of, you know, bumping up to them. Hey, what's up? What's up? You know, almost a fist bump is what you might as well say it is. So the first time they actually hit the first time was Sunday or Thursday night if you were talking about the Texans and Kansas City. So there's not a lot of time to get those guys ready for the first game. And that's where you see some guys start getting their legs on as the season goes on, provided they don't get that major injury because they haven't been used to hitting. It's going to be even harder for somebody like Randy Gregory, who today is first day back actually at star to start working out. Now he's not eligible to play until after until week seven. I'm not sure exactly why he got six more games on top of it, but, but hey, be that as it may. That gives him at least six weeks to try and get him into condition to be ready to play the game. But the problem is, is he missed all that training camp time. So don't expect to get a whole lot out of Randy Gregory. But, I will say but, Here's where it'll be a benefit. Through this battle of attrition, you know, we've already lost Blake Jarwin. You know, we're short, tight ends. You already see, you know, we've got Van Der Esch, you know, collarbone surgery, six to eight weeks. Sean Lee, six weeks. Now you got Joe Thomas and Jalen Smith. 
you can get short of players real quick. Any of you guys that have been watching me for any length of time know what I always say. And the Cowboys have yet to go ahead and try it and find out until maybe this year. But you always get the biggest bang for your buck on the defensive line. And if you can keep guys fresh to keep throwing it at that offensive line to get after that quarterback's ass, it will lead to good things. You saw that Alden Smith, up in there, putting a whole lot of pressure on Jared Goff, led to interception. Make no mistake about it. We only got eight last year. Eight total for the season. But you see the difference of pressure being in a quarterback's face. And if we can get that, and if we have an injury, you've got a Randy Gregory that can go in, or you've got a Tyrone Crawford. So this is where, as the season develops and you get guys with nagging injuries, you can keep them fresh, you can keep them going after them, and you can start making bigger plays. If that pass rush is stout, it will lead to good things for your team. Take no, no further look than the division leading. Damn! You know, burgundy and gold all day. All day. That mother humper is there talking about, you know, is this a sign? Is it a sign that we're going to be world champions? Oh, my God. Man. Wouldn't that be some crap? That would be some crap. But anyway, take no further look than the Washington football team and see the amount of pressure that they were able to put on. Now, now keep in mind, keep in mind as Chris, uh, as uh, Charlie Cow, Charlie Casserly, I need some sleep. Charlie Casserly put it. Now, let's pump the brakes a little bit because they basically were going against the JV offensive line. Because <laughs> they broke up. They're hurt. They're damaged. They're old. Uh, and then you got Carson Wentz, who, strangely enough, I'm wondering how bad is Carson? You know, he had the soft tissue injury, and they say he's fine, yet they didn't move the pocket around much. They didn't play action and bootleg him. Is that because they were worried about aggravating his leg? You know, that soft tissue? And that he couldn't move real well? Because it seemed like they kept him in the pocket and kept him as a stationary target. I'm just saying, Doug Peterson is, is a bright coach. And he knows about moving the quarterback around and things like that to help him. I'm wondering if that was more of Carson Wentz is actually a little more nicked up than we are told. And after the pounding he took, eight sacks, eight, eight sacks, damn, I'm hurting just thinking about eight sacks. But we'll see what we got this week. We got, thank God we got Jordan Lewis to come back too, because we're going to need it, because Calvin Ridley and Julio Jones and Matty Ice, um, 450 yards last week. 450. I need to look at that film. Maybe I'll have to tell you where. Go back over to the Cowboys, look at the uh, Falcons, and see if some of that was just garbage time. But we need this win. All right, y'all. That's all we got. Let's see. We got the Zeke tattoo, Sean Lee surgery. Um, Jordan Lewis back. Hate for Dak, of course, always. And, um, I guess that covers it. So, thank you guys for being here. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to be here today. Hopefully, I'll be here tomorrow. Thoughts and prayers. To all of us. We are going through some bad shit right now. But it'll get better.
I'll see you guys in the morning. Peace.